May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son are redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens, may the Spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We like to have control over everything in our lives. We think that we have control. We control what we eat, what we do. We think we control our time. We, we like to have control over much of how our life goes. Well, I have this planned out, I have that planned out. But brothers and sisters, I think this pandemic has made most people realize we don't have any control. And any control that we think we have is just an illusion. So often I think when we look back at how our ancestors handled plagues and, and illness and, and such tragedies, they handled it so much better 
because they never had any control. They never knew what was going to happen, or they didn't have, uh, you know, in, in many ways, they didn't have any control over the weather, or whether their crops would be good, or whether they had food on the table. They knew that some people would get sick, and some people will die. And they knew how to handle all this better than I think we do. Because of many things. First and foremost, they realized they had no control and they had to give everything over to God. But I think technology has made us think that we have all the control in the world. That because of technology or because of science or one thing or another, that God is no longer important. Or even if we believe that God is important, we still think that because of technology and science, we are in control. Most especially because of modern medicine. It used to be that you could stub your toe or, or get some slight cut and it would turn into an infection and it would kill you. But because of the gift of modern medicine, we can overcome many of these minor illnesses that would have been so tragic in days past. But I think all of this, this assurance that we think we know everything, we're reminded very regularly, especially when our lives may fall apart from our own personal tragedies or illnesses or loss or death or suffering or some kind of struggle, that we are reminded that we don't have it all. We don't know it all, and we can very much see that science does not either. It cannot. We can understand the noble world around it more and more and more, but there's always so much more. Because God is abundant in his goodness, and he is so abundant in his complexity. We see how technology rules our lives. We even see in our own moment here with live streaming that when things don't go right, everyone panics and immediately falls into some kind of struggle about what's going on. We think we have everything in control until the Wi-Fi would go down. Or my phone just automatically clicks and chooses a different um, a different port to, to connect to. This is what happened and why we lost our signal for a moment. When technology works well, it's great. But I think it gives us false assur assurances. I'll never forget one time at the seminary, the Wi-Fi went down, and within a few hours we were all joking that, you know, chaos and riots were going to begin to ensue. Because we cannot, we, we, we've come so accustomed that we cannot live without that technology. We panic when things don't go right or when we lose our signal. We forget that not long ago, none of us had a signal at all. And so in all of this, it's given us these false assurances, but it also has made us rely only on it. On something you know, we struggle with in faith is that we cannot see, we cannot experience, we cannot always tangibly feel. And brothers and sisters, that is why I think the sacraments are so beautiful, because the way Christ handed them to us and gave them to us and created them himself is to use things that touch and feel, the oils that we use and the bread and the wine and the touch of the, of the other person, the laying on of hands, the embrace of the couple. In all of this, brothers and sisters, it's a tangible reality. We can touch and feel and experience our faith, but then in those moments that we start to have struggle of the feeling and the emotion isn't always there, then we panic. Just like when we lose the Wi-Fi. But we need to trust in Him. We need to see that all of this is not something that we put our trust and our faith in, but we put our trust and our faith in God. And in fact, the very word faith and trust can be so interchangeably uh, used throughout the scriptures, you can take one out or the other and replace it with the other, because they mean pretty much the same thing. Because our control is not in this world, our control is not in ourselves, it is in God. And so therefore we must have faith, we must have trust. That he has us. And yes, it may not go as we desire. It may not look like we want. But 
because of this gift of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we have been celebrating these past days of Easter. As we continue this last week of Easter, we are reminded that he has conquered death. And so we have nothing to fear, even in death. That this is a transitory world. We see so much struggle and, and worry over the loss of life in our world in this pandemic. And it is so beautiful to finally see because so often in our world and in our culture, all we see is death and the embracing of death. Whether it be abortion or euthanasia. Our world seems to think that that is all okay, but all of a sudden now we need to save lives when we need to always be saving life. In this, brothers and sisters, it means we have to give over all of our control. We cannot control everything about our lives. And in fact, the scriptures tell us very clearly today, Lord, are you, go, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. Brothers and sisters, it is not for you to know. Because so often in these times of pandemic, we want to know why. But it is not for you to know. It is for you to trust. That in these times of pandemic, we give over the control. Because then when everything does fall apart, and we've already given over the control, it's a lot more comforting because I never had it in the first place. When it all falls apart and control is lost, we can accept it so much greater when we, real, when we realize the great gift of giving everything, including our lives and our will and everything about us to the Father. In this gift, we are set free. Whenever I take the St. Teresa students on retreat, I always take their phones away from them. It's almost a comical moment, sometimes very frustrating for me, because they don't want to give up their phones. They panic when we take their phones away from them. They panic when they don't have them. They try to hide them from you, keep them from finding them. And I'm very good at finding them. I will always find them. But brothers and sisters, what they tell me, though, is after a day or so, they'll make comments. I'm glad you took our phones. I finally feel free. They're not worrying about who's texting or who's... Facebook messaging or who's Instagramming or what po what someone posted on one of these social, social media sites or what snap you received or making sure that you keep your streaks. They can let all of that go for a brief moment. Because the technology companies know what what we desire and, and what we need and or well not what we need, but we what we want. And they play on this addiction to our devices. I struggle with this in my own ways, in my own self. To make sure that we put down our phones and actually look at one another and have conversations with one another. Because these devices, they are set up to, to always be pinging or doing something so you're always looking. Those notifications. But all of this is to get us to use their app or their phone or whatever device it is more often. It's to control you. So give up the control. Let go of everything. And give it over to him. Because then, like those students, you will realize how free you are. And not just in the use of your phone, but yes, especially young people. Get off your phones and look at your families and talk to them some. But see how in giving up all of this, in letting it go and not being a slave to our devices, that we are set free from not only then the devices, but then we start to give over the control of our sins. Because we don't want to let go of those sins because we like them too much. We want to hold on to them. And when we can give them over, we are set free from them. By the gift of Christ's cross, by the gift of his death, his resurrection, and today, his ascension. In the Ascension, we are reminded of the fact that our bodies are so good, and they can be used for good. They can be holy, and so holy that 
yes, it can ascend to be with the Father. We are reminded today that as the Gospel tells us so clearly, go out and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go out and go therefore and make disciples of all nations and baptize them. We go out and teach them who Christ is and then bring them to the gift of baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and then teaching them all to observe all that he has commanded us. But then if he's ascended, if he's gone to the Father, then how can we live? Because he said, he promises, I will be with you until the end of the age. And if he's ascended, then he's left us. No. Brothers and sisters, we heard very clearly in that first reading again. We heard the, the angel say, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will return to you in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. And brothers and sisters, as he ascended into heaven, today he descends and comes back to be with us. That at the Mass, all of heaven and earth comes together. And in the same way that he ascended to the Father, he then takes us to the Father in this moment of the Mass. Then therefore, we are longing for the day that we can return to receive and to be in his presence and receive that gift of being in heaven with him now so that we might follow where the head goes, our head and shepherd Jesus Christ, that we, the body of Christ, might follow where he has ascended and, and is waiting for you and for me right here. But he promised us he would be with us always, not just in the Mass, but always, and so he is always here in the tabernacle. And so many people have said things about how they wish they could come and pray in the church. And the church has been open this whole time for prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament. In the Diocese of Springfield, we never closed our churches. We've made this announcement multiple times. It's open all day to come and to sit in His presence, to be with Him, and to be reminded that He has promised that He would be always with us. So may this time of lack of control be a time to renew yourselves in Him. A time to let it go, let it all go, and to give it all over to Him. A time of longing for this moment of heaven and earth come together, so that we may follow where He goes. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, for the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Knowing that our Lord is in full control of our entire lives, we give ourselves over to Him in our prayers and our needs. For all the members of the church, especially the new initiated, that they welcome God's presence in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all who flee persecution, 
that they find safe refuge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the farmers and ranchers who provide the world's food, that they receive a just reward for the labor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have lost loved ones in the cause of freedom, that they be comforted by memories of noble service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the members of this community, for members of this community of faith, that they take seriously their baptismal call to service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for Betty Perry, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Together, please turn back in your books to the prayer for my parish part and we'll recite it together. Almighty God, my parish is composed, composed of people like me. me. I, I help make it what it is. It will It'll be friendly if I am. It will be holy if I am. It will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It will be prayerful if I pray. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will be near the people to its worship, if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish family of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, and of compassion, charity, and mercy, if I, who make it what it is, am filled with these same qualities. Therefore, with the help of God, I will dedicate myself to the task of being all the things I want my parish to be. Bless my journey, Lord God, that I might follow Jesus and build the church for your glory. Amen. Yeah. 
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to the end of our salvation. Always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conquered sin and death, ascended today to the heights of heaven as as the angels gaze in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that he, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with hassle joy, every land, every people exulting praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together in any hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But when only say the word, my soul shall be healed. I believe that you, I believe that you are present, are present in the blessed sacrament. In the blessed sacrament. I love you. I love you above all things. Above all things. And I desire you. And I desire you in my soul. In my soul. Since I cannot now, since I cannot now receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Spiritually into my heart. As though you, as though you were already there. We're already there. I embrace you. I embrace you. And unite myself. And unite myself completely to you. Completely to you. Permit not. Permit not that I should ever. That I should ever be separated from you. Be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
We had a lot of people to bring into the church this year that we were unable to because of the, to the pandemic. And so uh, you'll be seeing some baptisms and confirmations at the different masses throughout the week, uh, the weeks ahead, um, to bring in those people that have been waiting uh, throughout the year for, uh, through the RCIA program to join into the church. And then lastly, um, our, our confirmations uh, candidates uh, for our, our, our students in PSR, um, we've been given permission as pastors to do those confirmations. And so uh, we have 47 which uh, gives us, it's a great gift, but it also means that uh, we have to probably, maybe, depending on what the government ends up doing or what the diocese ends up deciding on opening back up, we might need to do two or three dates. Uh, so as soon as I can get those planned and those dates out to you, I will, and we'll have those uh, dates put up and, and available as soon as we can. Uh, so please keep in mind, uh, keep, keep, uh, keep your eye out for those, especially if you have a confirmation student. And with that, um, what it will be is it will be a sign-up uh, thing, especially we'll probably have to divvy it up into two or three groups of uh, confirmation. And so uh, you can sign up for one of those dates, and then uh, we'll have confirmation on those dates, and we can uh, move forward and hopefully have everything wrapped up sacramentally before I depart on July 1st. So uh, it would be a, a great joy to make sure we have that all complete uh, to uh, begin a new with your new pastor. So, um, so uh, with that, tomorrow is also the... Um, Cemetery Mass out at St. Isidore's Cemetery uh, for Memorial Day. Uh, we will live stream that Mass at 9 a.m., so please join us online to follow that Mass, and um, uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, gift to have uh, such a beautiful cemetery and uh, to pray for the dead, our beloved dead, especially those who have served uh, so, so uh, beautifully for, in serving their country uh, that we, we celebrate tomorrow then. So Mass is at 9 a.m. Please join us online for that for that Mass time to be available. Anything else I'm missing? Oh, yes, and today is uh, my sixth anniversary of our ordination of the priesthood. Uh, I cannot believe it's been six years. It just seems like just yesterday, but it also seems like an eternity ago. It's kind of a weird reality. Um, but uh, six years uh, down and, and many more to come, hopefully. Um, Pray for a lot of our priests around this time because Memorial Day weekend is the weekend we normally ordain our priests. So therefore, the majority of uh, ordination anniversaries are usually around these last, you know, these last two or three days before, two or three days after this one. And uh, so keep those guys in your prayers um, as they celebrate their anniversaries. One of our priests is celebrating seventy. Or actually, I think two of them are celebrating seventy years this year. So seventy years of priesthood. Uh, which is just absolutely outstanding. So keep all of our priests in your prayers to be good and holy priests and to continue, continue that great work, whether it be uh, only three or four weeks for Father Kosk uh, from our own parish or whether it be 70 years for uh, Father Donahoe and um, Father uh, Schmidt, Carl Schmidt. So God bless them all for their service and for, for uh, all of you for our prayer, for the prayers for all of us. And I, I think that's everything. Uh, the Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Now down to the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where He is. Amen. May He grant that as Christ after His resurrection was seen plainly by His disciples, so when He comes as judge, He may show Himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And may you who believe He is seated with the Father in His majesty. Know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Thanks Michael, Michael, the Archangel, the defense of the battle, battle be our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, rest in hell, Satan, and all evil spirits who wander about the world, seeking to ruin the souls of Amen.